Hello, I'm Amara Jones and welcome to Caffeine TV, your daily video news brief here to take you through three headline numbers in just three minutes giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the real housewives. The first number up today is 11 as in the number of grand jurors who might be left on the grand jury in Ferguson investigating the death of Michael Brown. Now why would that grand jury go from 12 to 11? It's because of a tweet that someone sent out yesterday. Now this is a bit of a story but someone said that someone that they know on the grand jury told them that there's not enough evidence to indict Officer Wilson. And this would mean that the uh, proceedings of the grand jury were compromised. And as you know, grand juries don't decide guilt or innocence. What they do decide is whether or not there's enough evidence to force someone to stand trial. Those proceedings are meant to be private, and if they're not in this case, that grand juror has got to bounce. Now, not only is this the latest example of the fact that when you send out a tweet, it can be the equivalent of shouting fire in a crowd in a theater comprised of the entire world, but it's also the case that it shows that Ferguson isn't going anywhere anytime soon as an issue. And this isn't the only question that's hanging over the heads of the grand jury and their proceedings. And so, like Faulkner said, the past isn't even past, so Ferguson will be with us for a while. The next number up today is 12, as in the number of jurors who successfully convicted Michael Dunn in the retrial of the death of Jordan Davis in the so-called loud music trial. Now, it's not a music trial, it's a murder trial, but I guess that CNN had to come up with a tagline or something. Now, it doesn't seem that the jury didn't buy, or they couldn't have bought Dunn's argument that he felt so threatened of a bunch of teenagers playing loud music that when he went over to ask them to turn it down, he ended up riddling the car with bullets and killed Davis with three of them. And maybe the reason, one of the reasons why they didn't buy it is the fact that later that night, he went home, popped open a cold one, had a couple of boxes of pizza, and hung out and watched television with his girlfriend. Now, the good news about this case is the fact that it shows that a jury comprised of a different racial makeup than the victim can render justice. The jury was mostly white, and a Davis was black. But it also just goes to show us in a surprise move that every now and again, you actually can get justice in Florida. And the last number up to date is one, as in 1%, according to Facebook, that's the proportion of their users who uh, legitimately don't use their given name on the site. According to Facebook, you have to use your birth name in order to be able to tell the world your entire business on their social media platform. Now, in enforcing this policy, the problem is that Facebook was kicking off trans men and women, drag queens, and domestic violence survivors who were trying to not alert their attackers to where they are. Duh. Well, the good news is that a successful campaign mounted by a coalition led by three drag queens in San Francisco, Little Miss Hot Mess, Herklina, and Sister Roma. I wonder if Little Miss Hot Mess's name is trademark because I could definitely use it. Um, got Facebook to climb down from this ridiculous policy. And that is really important for all of us because what's more human than the ability to name ourselves? I mean, if you met Stephanie Germanata, would you want to talk to her? You, no, you want to talk to Lady Gaga. If you met Barry Obama, 30 years ago, would you want to talk to him? No, you want to talk to Barack Obama, the President of the United States. And all of this just goes to show us in an inspirational move that when the queer community stands up for its rights, when we stand up for our rights, we're actually fighting for the rights of everybody.